So let's cover some of the physical networking basics. Our physical network is made up of switches, routers, and NIC cards. And these help move traffic physically by sending signals down cables. Switches work at the layer two level and they're focused on the movement of frames. Routers work at the layer three level and are focused on the movement of packets. Now when our router receives a packet and sends it down towards a switch, it actually encapsulates that packet inside a frame. So that frame can then be moved along our local area network or our subnet. Okay? And that's how physical networking works. Think of it this way. Uh, when you order a pizza, you got to tell them your street and your house address, right? Our, uh, when we work with our routers, our routers have a subnet. Let's say we're on the 10.1.1.0 network, that's a slash 24. When I have that slash 24, the slash 24 tells me the street. The street is 10.1.1. That's my local area network, right? So it's going to this street. This number here is like my house number. It tells me exactly where on that local area network I am. So if my house number is 22, that's where the pizza gets delivered, right? But if there are multiple houses with the same house number, that's not such a big deal unless all those houses are on the same street. And then the pizza is pretty much undeliverable. You're going to pick the nicest looking house on the block and see if you get a bigger tip, right? So make sure you understand the basics of how this delivery process works. Switches forward based on MAC addresses. I don't know if you guys know the MAC addresses. Macs, MAC addresses are in hexadecimal form and they're unique. Or at least they should be unique on a LAN. If you don't have a unique MAC address on a LAN through, through the native process of, of handing out local uh, of MAC addresses, you need to go buy a lottery ticket because the chances of having multiple MAC addresses on the same local area network is very, very, very small. So MAC addresses are used by switches to forward to ports. So let's put it this way. This port here on a switch is going to be mapped to a specific MAC address. That MAC address represents the piece of equipment that's connected. And that is make, made up of an OUI, organizational unique identifier part of the MAC address, and then a randomly assigned, well, usually sequentially assigned number after that. So that is your MAC address, and that's how switches forward frames. Your NIC card contains your MAC address. It is also used to turn the zeros and ones because when we move traffic from this port over to our environment, it's zeros and ones. The NIC card reassembles those zeros and ones into a frame, takes a look at what's inside that frame, and then gives the data to the equipment if it's required. Like I said earlier, LANs are our local area network or subnets. They can also be VLANs, virtual LANs, that we logically separate out on a port by port basis. So I could say on a layer, on a switch that these two ports, these belong to VLAN 10 and the VLAN 10 is the 10.1.10/24 address. And then these ports here, these can go to VLAN 20 and that belongs to the 10.0 or .1.20.0 slash 24. Now the IP address could be completely different, right? It doesn't have to be 10.1.20. That's just good administration. So uh, when we, I'm just messing around, just goofing off guys, sorry. So that's how our VLANs work. And one thing I really want you to know is VLAN 10 and VLAN 20 are completely separated, right? They're on different VLANs. They are on different local area networks. I like to think of VLANs as layer two domains. 
This is a layer two domain. And I cannot pass traffic from a layer two domain to another layer two domain unless I have a layer three device. And oftentimes that layer three device is a router, right? Hopefully you guys are following along. If you're having trouble with your subnets, I would look at an, in a subnetting course offered by Stormwind or some uh, video offered by Stormwind really helps explain this in more detail than we can in our short amount of time because we're not in a networking course. We're just trying to configure our VMware networking configurations. All right, so that is our local area network. Now let's discuss ports. Like I said, we can assign VLANs to ports, so that's part of the configuration on your physical side. Also, you might be needing to implement something like port fast because our virtual switches do not generate BDPUs, BPDUs, Bridge Protocol Data Units, yeah. So we need to make sure that our ports are set up correctly. We may want to trunk if we have multiple VLANs set up in our virtual environment. So make sure you're aware that we might need to set up a port as a trunk and we might not. To set up a port as a trunk means to simply allow a port like this port to accept multiple VLANs. We could have it accept VLAN 20 tagging and VLAN 10 tagging. Next up, we have our cabling and our uplinks in our physical environment. What we're really looking for here is a speed match. We want to make sure that the speed of our cabling matches the speed of our uplinks and the speed of our ports. So this has to match too. Very important that we get the speeds right so we can communicate at the level we expect. If, uh, if any one of these items is speed limited. Let's say everything on this side is 10 gigabit, but this port is 1 gigabit. I am not going to be able to run at 10 gigabit speeds. I am bottlenecked at 1 gigabit. I can only go as fast as the slowest piece of equipment. So our, our I mean, I did a lot of scribbling there. Sorry, folks. But it, when you look at this, if there's any questions you have, please write it down. Write down what you're having trouble with in this concept and then go over it or, or find one of the videos from Stormwind. There's some great instructors for the networking side of things. And they will help, those videos will help you get a better understanding of how traffic flows within your environment. Because as hard as this is, now we're gonna virtualize it. We're gonna virtualize a lot of this infrastructure and that's gonna be difficult if you don't understand the basic concepts of physical traffic, okay? So let's look at some of our virtual infrastructure. Our virtual networking infrastructure starts with the basic vSwitch. The vSwitch is the workhorse of our virtual environments. This is what allows connectivity to almost everything. We also have the distributed switch this is at layer two, and this is also at layer two. For some reason, I saw somebody um, in the forums, or I can't even remember where I read it, read it, actually described a distributed switch as a layer three switch. That is completely incorrect. That is not at all correct. It is a layer two switch with a lot of features. It has an incredible amount of features that our virtual switch doesn't, and a distributed switch can be pushed to multiple hosts. So it's still a layer two switch. Just think of it as a fancy level two switch. Layer two switch, excuse me. Next, we have our VM kernel groups. Oh, sounds complicated, it's not. You wanna know what this is? This runs VMware services. That's all that does. This is the connectivity of our VMware services so they can communicate with each other, vCenter server, or agents that may be placed on other hosts. It. It's simple. We can come up with security configs and all sorts of stuff for it and configure those services individually. But that's all they are, VMware services. We'll, we'll dive more into that. Port groups, ooh, another fancy term. No, not really. This is for data. I wish they would have just called it data and I wish they would have just called it VMware services. But the, this really does make sense because it's a VM kernel process and we're gonna group it together and we're gonna do our configurations based on that group. 
It's a port, really. And if you take it to the physical sense of things, it's exactly the same. A port moves data as well. But port groups are meant for VM data. And then we can alter, uh, port groups are basically a group of configurations for any virtual machine connected to it, and it's called a port group. So really interesting how they divided things along. So what do I want you to remember from this? The physical side of things, the switches, the uplinks, those configurations that we might have to do, and the networking basics for virtualization. Layer two, we're at layer two for the switches. We have our VM kernel groups, those are VMware services, and our port groups, which is VM data. That's it. Those are the basics of what we're working with. And as we move forward for networking, it's gonna get a lot harder. But for right now, that's enough to get you started. If you have any questions on anything we've talked about, go ahead and backfill that knowledge, and then you can continue on with the next video in the lesson.